Welcome to an Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, we're talking about the performance impact of RAM speed on the Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 series. To minimize the variation of performance, as many things as possible were manually adjusted. The CPU fans were set to max. The RTX 2080 is water-cooled with a constant frequency of 2050 MHz on the core and 7500 MHz on the RAM. With the water cooling and constant temperature, we're able to prevent the GPU to lower or increase the frequencies due to temperature changes. The Windows 10 version is slightly tweaked and with some services disabled. All the tests were done on the Tarkov version 0.12.10988 and the GPU driver version was 461.40. You can see my NVIDIA control panel settings here as well as my in-game settings. Nothing too special or even adjusted for this test. These are the settings I personally use for Escape from Tarkov. The CPU used during the test runs a Ryzen 5 5600X and the clock is set to 4.6 GHz on all cores. And now to the RAM. The used RAM are two sticks of 16 GB crucial ballistic 3600 MHz. The tested frequencies are 3200 MHz as the entry level with 14, 16, 16, 36, which can be found on the cheaper RAM, 3600 MHz with 16, 18, 18, 38 for the most recommended frequency with decent timings, and the last one is 3800 MHz with optimized timings set to 16, 17, 16, 38. The timings for 3200 and 3600 represent settings like you would use after just activated XMP and call it a day. The 3800 with optimized timings are for users who are willing to spend hours and hours of testing the RAM to get the best possible performance. The memory clock, memory controller clock and infinity fabric clock were always one to one to one for the best performance. And to test the impact on the performance, every map was tested 10 times in offline mode. These runs were always around the same in-game time and the same sunny weather conditions and the restart of the game after every raid and restart the PC when changing maps. For every run, the FPS were benchmarked for a 30 second time frame with frame view. Every run started at the same starting point and running in the same direction for about 30 seconds to minimize any possible variation during these tests. Labs and factory are not included. We couldn't find an area that met the requirements and for the final result we used the average of the 10 runs for average FPS, minimum FPS and maximum FPS. Now we get into the results. But before we do that, one final note. The runs shown in the background were recorded after all the testing. Let's start with the first map woods. The average FPS on woods were almost identical and could even fall under the margin of error with 209 FPS with 3200 MHz, 211 FPS with 3600 MHz and 214 FPS for 3800 MHz. It is similar with the minimum FPS with 55 with 3200 MHz, 56 with 3600 MHz and 57 FPS with 3800 MHz. Only the maximum FPS shows a slightly different picture. With 3200 again, the lowest FPS with 256 and 3600 again second with 273 FPS and the most FPS with the 3800 with 282 FPS. That is about a 2.5% uplift in average FPS and even 10% for the max FPS. The next map is Customs, which shows a completely different picture in FPS. The ranking of the average FPS is still the same with 3200 MHz, the lowest with 214 FPS, 3600 with 229 FPS and 3800 MHz with 233 FPS. But the minimum FPS are different. This time 3800 MHz reached the lowest FPS with 55 FPS behind 3200 MHz with 66 FPS and 3600 megahertz is a clear winner with 110 fps. This behavior wasn't in every run but in more runs than it was not. They have the same ranking as on woods with 3200 megahertz the lowest 
with 268 FPS, 3600 MHz reached 277 FPS, and 3800 MHz has a big lead with 330 FPS. These drops in the min FPS with 3200 MHz and 3800 MHz are but weird. So let's have a look at the 90th percent, 95th percent, and the 99th percent, which show that 3800 MHz still delivers the best experience, followed by 3600 and the lowest FPS again with 3200. The next map, let's go to Shoreline. Shoreline shows the same picture in the average FPS as the other maps before. 3200 comes up to 235 FPS. 3600 MHz only slightly buff with 236 FPS. And in a big lead with 251 FPS is again the 3800 MHz configuration. The max FPS shows a similar picture. 3200 MHz with 322 FPS followed by 3600 MHz with 330 FPS and again the highest FPS with 3800 MHz with 346 FPS. But the minimum FPS were a bit different again. This time the highest FPS were with the 3200 MHz settings with 71 FPS followed by 3800 MHz with 69 FPS. Nice! And the lowest minimum FPS has 3600 MHz with 60 FPS. The 90th percent, 95th percent and the 99th percent are the same again with 3800 on top, followed by 3600 and then 3200. And ranking on interchange is the same as on Shoreline. Let's go through them. The average FPS 199 for 3200 MHz. 211 FPS for 3600 and 229 FPS for 3800 MHz. For the maximum FPS, it's again 3800 MHz on top with 280 FPS, followed by 3600 with 256 FPS and 3200 with 235 FPS. And the minimum FPS were the same order as on Shoreline. 3200 MHz with 10% lead with 102 FPS in front of 3800 MHz with 92 FPS, while 3600 MHz reached only 89 FPS. The 90%, the 95% and the 99% are again in the usual order of 3800 on top followed by 3600 and 3200 MHz. The next map is Reserve. Some of you might have realized that the map somehow ended up in the same order as they were introduced into the game. Let's begin with the 90th percent, the 95th percent and the 99th percent. It seems that Reserve runs best with the 3600 MHz configuration, even though it's only by a few FPS, but it's consistently better than 3800 and clearly better than 3200. The average FPS indicates the same with 205 FPS for 3600 MHz, 202 FPS with 3800 and 196 FPS with 3200 MHz. The minimum FPS are again mixed up with 55 FPS on 3200 MHz and 3600 MHz reached 53 FPS. 3800 MHz has the lowest FPS with 48 FPS, but takes the lead again in the maximum FPS with 279 FPS, while 3600 MHz with 273 FPS and 3200 MHz achieved 258 FPS. As for the conclusion, is there a clear winner? In short, yes, the 3800 MHz configuration seems to be the best overall for Escape from Tarkov. Would it be worth to upgrade from a decent 3200 MHz kit or even a 3600 MHz kit? That answer is a definitive no. But the long answer is a bit more complicated than that. While the performance with the 3800 MHz kit was the best of the 90th percent, the 95th percent and the 99th percent, it also shows that the FPS was stable on every configuration and wouldn't affect the experiences in any way. And wouldn't justify to upgrade your memory unless you wanted to buy new RAM anyways, or you wanted to build a new PC. In that case, go for the fastest RAM with decent timings that fits your budget. And we all know that one patch can be enough to change the in-game performance drastically. With that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.